The Holy Quran, a divine scripture, was sent down to mankind 14 centuries ago. From the day of its revelation to the day of judgment, it will remain as the last and sole guide for humanity. There are countless proofs that the Quran is the word of God. Such examples are its literary qualities that no human being can imitate, the fact that it is free of all inconsistency, and the way it foretells the future and contains certain hidden information. The Quran contains another miracle that proves it to be God's revelation. There are a remarkable number of scientific truths that are contained in it. In this book that was revealed over 14 centuries ago, there are innumerable examples of information which humanity has only been able to uncover using today's technology. People at that time were devoid of science. Conceptions of the nature and the universe were based on superstition and myth. For example, the Arabs supposed that the earth was flat and that mountains supported the sky above. Yet, all these superstitious beliefs were eradicated with the revelation of the Quran. The verse, God is He who raised up the heavens without any support, invalidated the false beliefs of the Arabs regarding the sky. The Quran contains information on a great many subjects that nobody could have known at the time, from the creation of the universe to the making of man, from the structure of the atmosphere to the balances on earth. Recent scientific discoveries have shown just how miraculous this information is. In the early 20th century, the prevalent view across the world was that the universe was infinite. According to this view, known as the static universe model, the universe had no end or beginning. This view dominated the scientific world for many years. This was the case until the evidence for a theory rocked this erroneous belief. The Big Bang Theory The evidence proved that an explosion emanated from a single point some 15 billion years ago from nothingness. The entire universe, together with matter and time, came into existence as a result of a great explosion that occurred a long time ago. Many scientific findings today support the Big Bang Theory. It has now been proved that the universe had a beginning and was brought into being from nothing through a huge explosion. This fact, proved as the result of long research in the field of physics, was also declared 14 centuries ago in the Noble Quran. He created the heavens and the earth from nothing. Research carried out thanks to modern-day advanced technology, observation and calculation have shed light on many secrets concerning the universe. One of these is the fact that it is constantly expanding. This idea of expansion was first raised in the early 20th century. The Russian physicist Alexander Friedman 
and the Belgian cosmologist Georges Lemaitre theoretically calculated that the universe is in constant motion and that it is expanding. This notion was confirmed by the use of observational data in 1929. While observing the sky with a telescope, Edwin Hubble, the American astronomer, discovered a surprising fact. The stars and galaxies were constantly moving away from each other. This discovery is regarded as one of the greatest in the history of astronomy. A universe where everything constantly moves away from everything else implied a constantly expanding universe. Bodies in the universe were like points on the surface of a balloon being inflated. The more a balloon is inflated, the further away the points on its surface move from one another. Similarly, celestial bodies also move away from one another as the universe expands. There was no technology and no science of astronomy 14 centuries ago when the Quran was revealed. Nobody was then aware of this fact. Yet, it was clearly stated in Quranic verses that the universe was expanding. And it is we who have constructed the heavens with might, and verily it is we who are steadily expanding it. The Human Body A flawless structure with many fine details that still have yet to be discovered. Scientists engaged in research using today's advanced technology obtained astonishing results concerning the human body. One of these dealt with the tissues in the body. Living tissues contain 26 different elements. Six of these are the most common. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. These basic elements represent 95% of all tissues. This, in turn, represents important scientific evidence of the information revealed in the Quran, the creation of man out of clay. The building blocks that constitute almost all the human body are present in the soil, either in free or compound forms. The first human being was created by God, who shaped clay into human form and breathed the soul into it. This miraculous event is described in the Quran. Your Lord said to the angels, I am going to create a human being out of clay. When I have formed him and breathed my spirit into him, fall down in prostration to him. In another verse, God tells us that we created man from an extract of clay. The Arabic word sulala, translated as extract in the verse, means representative example or essence. The information revealed in the Quran 1400 years ago confirms what modern science tells us. The fact that the same elements are employed in human creation as those found in the soil. (laughs) 
Let us now consider all those human beings who have ever lived and who are living today. Every person has his or her own set of fingerprints. Even identical twins having the very same DNA sequence have different fingerprints. That is because there is a special formation in the fingerprints. Fingerprints attain their final shape before birth and remain the same for a lifetime unless a permanent scar appears. That is why fingerprints are accepted as a very important proof of identity, exclusive to their owner. Scientists discovered this important feature only in the later 19th century. However, in the Quran, God points to the fingertips, which did not attract anyone's attention at that time, and calls our attention to their importance. Does man imagine we will not reassemble his bones? Yes, we are able to put together in perfect order the very tips of his fingers. He has created the heavens and the earth for truth. He wraps the night up in the day and wraps the day up in the night. The Arabic word that is translated as to wrap in this verse is yukawir. In English it translates as to make one thing lap over another folded up as a garment that is laid away. The information given in the verse about the day and the night wrapping each other up includes accurate information about the shape of the world. This can be true only if the earth is round. However, it was then thought that the world was a flat plane. Nobody knew that the earth was round. The revelation in the Quran at that time that the earth was round is one of the countless proofs that our holy book is the word of God. A very important feature of mountains is indicated in a Quranic verse. The function of preventing shocks in the earth. We placed firmly embedded mountains on the earth so it would not move under them. And geology today confirms this characteristic of mountains. Formerly, it was thought that mountains were merely protrusions rising above the surface of the earth. However, in the 20th century, scientists realized that this was not actually the case. Those parts known as mountain root extended down as far as 10 to 15 times their own height. For example, Mount Everest, the summit of which stands approximately nine kilometers above the surface of the Earth, has a root deeper than 125 kilometers.
mountains emerge as a result of the movements and collisions of massive plates forming the Earth's crust. When two plates collide, the stronger one slides under the other. The one on the top bends and forms heights and mountains. The layer beneath proceeds under the ground and makes a deep extension downwards. These extensions are the mountain roots. Thanks to their roots, mountains fix the Earth's crust. Therefore, they prevent any sliding over the magma layer or amongst the layers themselves and also prevent major earth tremors. With these features, mountains can be compared to nails holding strips of wood together. God tells us in the Quran, Haven't we made the earth as a bed, and the mountains its pegs? The fact that this function was revealed in the Quran at a time when it was unknown to anyone is another of this divine book's great miracles. Were it not for the fixing effect of the mountains, soil would not collect on the earth's surface Water would not accumulate in the soil. No plants could grow. In short, life on Earth would be impossible. Through the mercy of God, however, the Earth is capable of sustaining life. Sperm undertake a journey into the mother's body until they reach the ovum. Only a thousand out of 250 million sperm succeed in reaching the ovum. At the end of this five-minute race, the ovum, half the size of a grain of salt, will let only one of the sperm in. However, this finding that was determined in our own day reveals something that was previously unknown. That is, the substance of man is not the whole semen, but only a small part of it. This is explained in the Quran as follows. Does man reckon he will be left uncontrolled without purpose? Was he not once a drop of ejected semen? As close inspection shows, we are informed in the Quran that man is made not from the entire semen, but only a small part of it. This is also what modern science says. He creates you stage by stage in your mother's wombs in threefold darkness. That is God, your Lord. Sovereignty is His. There is no deity but Him. So what has made you deviate? Modern biology has revealed that the embryological development of the baby takes place in the manner revealed in the verse. The expression, a threefold darkness, indicates three dark regions involved during the development of the embryo. These are the darkness of the abdomen, the darkness of the womb, 
and the darkness of the placenta. It is also pointed out in this verse that a human being is created in the mother's womb in three distinct stages. In basic human embryology, a fundamental reference text in embryology, this fact is stated as follows. The life in the uterus has three stages, pre-embryonic, first two and a half weeks, embryonic, until the end of the eighth week, and fetal, from the eighth week to labor. Information on the development in the mother's womb became available only after observations with modern devices. Yet, just like many other scientific facts, in a miraculous way, God draws our attention to these items of information in the verses of the Quran. The fact that such detailed and accurate information was given in the Qur'an at a time when people had scarce information on medical matters is clear evidence that it is the Word of God. The development of a human being in its mother's womb is full of miracles. The fetus's ears began to develop as early as the 22nd day of pregnancy and become fully functional in the fourth month. After that, the fetus can hear sounds in the mother's womb. For that reason, the sense of hearing forms before the other vital functions for a newborn baby. The order set out in the Qur'an is striking from that point of view. It is He who has created hearing, sight, and minds for you. What little thanks you show! God brought you out of your mother's wombs, knowing nothing at all, and gave you hearing, sight, and minds so that perhaps you would show thanks. Close examination shows that the senses God refers to in the Qur'an are always mentioned in a particular order. Hearing, sight, and understanding. That is exactly the same order in which a baby's senses develop. In short, one of the discoveries of modern science, the order of development of human organs, is clearly stated in the Qur'an. Particular emphasis is placed in the Qur'an on one element. Iron. In Surat al-Hadid, meaning iron, we are informed. And we also sent down iron, in which there lies great force, and which has many uses for mankind. The word Anzalna, 
translated as we sent down and used for iron in the verse could be thought of having a metaphorical meaning to explain that iron has been given to benefit people. But when we take into consideration the literal meaning of the word, we realize that this verse implies a very significant scientific miracle. This meaning is being physically sent down from the sky, as in the case of rain and sun rays. Modern astronomical findings have disclosed that the iron found in our planet has come from giant stars in outer space. Not only the iron on Earth, but also the iron in the entire solar system comes from outer space, since the temperature in the sun is inadequate for the formation of iron. Iron can only be produced in much larger stars than the sun, where the temperature reaches a few hundred million degrees. When the amount of iron exceeds a certain level in a star, the star can no longer accommodate it and eventually explodes in what is called a nova or a supernova. These explosions make it possible for iron to be given off into space. All the iron on Earth came from outer space as a result of this process. In other words, iron was sent down to Earth, just like we are told in the verse. It is clear that this information could not have been established in the 17th century when the Qur'an was revealed. There are more than 100 billion galaxies in the visible universe and each small galaxy contains approximately a billion stars. Furthermore, each big galaxy contains more than a trillion. Many of these stars have planets and many of these planets have satellites. All these celestial bodies follow the most finely calculated paths and orbits for millions of years. Stars, planets and satellites all rotate around their own axes and also rotate together with the system of which they are a part. The universe functions within an order, just like the wheels in a factory. The movement of celestial bodies in their orbits is based upon extreme fine-tuning. Even the slightest deviation from their paths could have drastic consequences that might spell the end of the entire system. For example, the consequences of the Earth's deviating from its course by a mere three millimeters have been described in one source as follows. While rotating around the sun, the Earth follows such an orbit that every 18 miles it only deviates 2.8 millimeters from a direct course. The orbit followed by the Earth never changes because even a deviation of 3 millimeters would cause catastrophic disasters. If the deviation were 2.5 millimeters instead of 2.8 millimeters, then the orbit would be very large and all of us would freeze. If the deviation were 3.1 millimeters, 
we would be scorched to death. These facts were only discovered through astronomical research in the 20th century. Yet it was revealed 14 centuries ago in the Quran that heavenly bodies revolve in very finely tuned orbits. I swear by heaven with its oscillating orbits. In another verse we are told that it is he who created night and day and the sun and moon, each one swimming in a sphere. According to astronomers' calculations, the sun moves along a path known as the solar apex in the path of a star, Vega. This is just as revealed in the Quran. And the sun runs to its resting place. At the time of the revelation of the Quran, mankind definitely did not possess telescopes with which to gaze on outer space millions of kilometers away, observation technology, or the modern sciences of physics and astronomy. Therefore, it was impossible at that time to scientifically determine that space was equipped with oscillating orbits. However, this fact is clearly stated in the Quran which was sent down at that time, because the Qur'an is the word of God. I swear by heaven which returns. The word Raj, interpreted as return in Quran translations, has meanings of sending back or returning. This indicates an important scientific fact. The atmosphere surrounding the Earth consists of many layers. Each layer serves an important purpose for the benefit of life on Earth. They have the function of turning the materials or rays they are exposed to back into space or back down to the Earth. For example, the troposphere, 13 to 15 kilometers above the Earth, enables water vapor rising from the surface of the Earth to be condensed and turned back as rain. The ozone layer, the lower layer of stratosphere at an altitude of 25 kilometers, reflects harmful radiation and ultraviolet light coming from space and turns both back into space. The ionosphere reflects radio waves broadcast from the Earth back down to different parts of the world, just like a passive communication satellite. Thus, it makes wireless communication, radio and television broadcasting possible over long distances. The magnetosphere layer turns the harmful radioactive particles emitted by the Sun and other stars back into space before they reach the Earth. The fact that this property of the atmosphere's layers was only demonstrated in the recent past, yet was announced centuries ago in the Quran, 
once again confirms that the Quran is God's word. Clouds may give the naked eye the impression that they are merely large bodies of vapor floating in the air, but their weight can reach quite astonishing figures. For example, a cumulonimbus cloud, commonly known as the thunder cloud, can contain up to 300,000 tons of water. The fact that a mass of 300,000 tons of water can remain aloft is truly amazing. Attention is drawn to the weight of clouds in the Quran. It is he who sends out the winds, bringing advance news of his mercy, so that when they have lifted up the heavy clouds, we dispatch them to a dead land and send down water to it by means of which we bring forth all kinds of fruit. At the time when the Quran was revealed, of course, it was quite impossible to have any information about the weight of clouds. This information, revealed in the Quran but discovered only recently, is yet another proof that the Qur'an is the Word of God. In the honeybee colonies where each of the many bees is assigned a specific task, the only exception is the male honeybee. The males do not contribute to the cleaning of the hive, to gathering food or to making of the honeycomb and honey. The only function of the male bees in the hive is to inseminate the queen bee. The males possess almost none of the features possessed by the other bees. The worker bees carry the entire load of the colony. They have several duties, cleaning the hive, maintaining the larvae and the young, feeding the other bees, gathering supplies like nectar, pollen, water and resin, and storing these in the hive. Although they are females like the queen, their ovaries have not developed. This renders them sterile. The features of these creatures are described in the Quran in Surat An-Nahl, which means the honeybee. Your Lord revealed to the bees, build dwellings in the mountains and the trees and also in the structures which men erect. Then eat from every kind of fruit and travel the paths of your Lord, which have been made easy for you to follow. From inside them comes a drink of varying colors containing healing for humanity. There is certainly a sign in that for people who reflect. This verse contains an important secret that can only be understood by means of Arabic grammar. In Arabic, there are two different usages of verbs. By means of the usage, it is possible to determine whether the subject is a female or a male. As a matter of fact, the verbs used for the honeybee in the verses are used in the format of the verb for females. Through this, it is indicated that the honeybees that work in the making of honey are females. It must not be forgotten that gender in insects was only understood through modern biological observations. The fact that the worker bees are all female was only established in our day. 
Yet God shows another miracle of the Quran by drawing our attention to this fact in verses. Today, the relativity of time is a proven scientific fact. This was revealed by Einstein's theory of relativity during the early part of the 20th century. Until then, it was not known that time was relative, nor that it could change according to the circumstances. Yet, the renowned scientist Albert Einstein proved this fact by showing that time is dependent on mass and velocity. However, the Quran revealed some 1300 years before Einstein had already included information about time as being relative. A day with your Lord is equivalent to a thousand years in the way you count. He directs the whole affair from heaven to earth. Then it will again ascend to him on a day whose length is a thousand years by the way you measure. It is estimated that in one second approximately 16 million tons of water evaporate from the earth. This figure amounts to 505 trillion tons of water in one year. This number is equal to the amount of rain that falls on the earth in a year and this amount is fixed every year. Therefore water continuously circulates in a balanced cycle according to a measure. However, this delicate measure only determined through means afforded by modern technology, was miraculously revealed in the Quran 14 centuries ago. It is he who sends down water in measured amounts from the sky by which we bring a dead land back to life. That is how you too will be raised from the dead. Life on earth depends on this water cycle. Even a minor deviation in this equilibrium would soon give rise to a major ecological imbalance that would make the earth unfit for life. Revealed in the 7th century at a time when people's knowledge of what was under the sea was very limited, the Quran contains important information about the structure of the sea and even about the depths of the oceans. He has let loose the two seas converging together with a barrier between them they do not break through. This property of the seas, that is, that they meet and yet do not intermix, has only very recently been discovered by oceanographers. 
Because of the physical force called surface tension, the waters of neighboring seas do not mix. It is another miracle that during a period when there was little knowledge of physics and of surface tension or oceanography, this truth was revealed in the Quran. The Qur'an is the word of Almighty God, who created all things out of nothing and who enfolds all beings with his knowledge. It is for these reasons that these facts that modern science has only recently discovered appear in the Qur'an, sent down 1400 years ago. In one verse, God reveals this about the Qur'an. If it had been from other than God, they would have found many inconsistencies in it. There is no inconsistency in the Qur'an. Furthermore, the information within our holy book, the Qur'an, reveals new miracles with every passing day. Human beings are meant to hold fast to this divine book revealed by God and to receive it with an open heart as their one and only guide in life. In the Quran, God tells us the following. And this is a book we have sent down and blessed. So follow it and fear God, so that hopefully you will gain mercy.